Hey guys, it's Renee. Welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to make some chocolate cookies. Now I found this recipe online. I'm going to link the blog where I found this below. So you can check the original recipe. This is just half of it. So for this one I'm going to be using butter. And this is unsalted butter and it's at room temperature. Granulated sugar, a large egg, some vanilla extract, then some all-purpose flour, then my cocoa powder and a bit of salt. So this is it for the ingredients that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and start the recipe. I'm just going to cream my butter and sugar for about one minute or so. I'm going to be mixing this in a uh, low to medium speed and don't over beat it because or over mix it because it's going to incorporate a lot of air into your dough at the end and we don't want that. Going to put it in setting number two. As you go, you're going to you want to be scraping down the sides. So I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds more and then I'm going to add my egg. This is what it looks like right now. And so then I'm adding my egg. And mix them. Going to be scraping down the sides again. Then my vanilla goes in. Going back. It's just until you see everything is getting uh, incorporated. And in a separate bowl, I'm going to be mixing my dry ingredients. And the dry ingredients are the powders, the flour, your cocoa powder, things that are, well, powders or dry. Just going to mix everything. And this step is important because sometimes you just uh, have a dessert and there is one piece or one bit where you kind of taste a lot of salt, like all the salt they added on the recipe just gathers into just one spot and you taste it so it's like too salty so this is why this is important to you um, kind of make sure the salt goes everywhere and not just in one spot so just mix everything well until everything looks kind of um, mixed or together there's really no way to to tell where the salt right now but you know just like that and now everything goes in, I mean my dry ingredients. Then I'm going to remove my panel attachment. This is something that I only do, it's not necessary. Then I'm going to just stir all my ingredients, the dry ingredients. So everything goes in there. And the reason I remove my panel attachment is because I need more space in here. Not necessary if you don't want to do this in all of the mixture, just to make sure I don't have any lumps in my dry ingredients just before mixing everything. What I like to do because if I add my paddle attachment and then just move it, everything is going to be like poof, all over the place. It's going to be like a, an explosion there. So what I do is kind of mix before everything. So my dry ingredients kind of get wet, not really, but kind of. And it's getting, it's going to rain, I think. So if my sun goes down, it's because of that. Paddle attachment back on. Just going to first start a little slow and then once I feel it's not going to be messy at all anymore I just do this but as you can see I don't have any puff around it it's really dark and it's getting dark so it's hard to see how to make sure it's damn it's kind of heavy just going to whoa it's it's really heavy I have to say it smells really good this is actually the first time that I tried this recipe it's got an awesome consistency to be honest just going to scrape down the sides and this dough is like not loose at all if you know what I mean it's not one of those recipes that is like you have to wait like one hour on the fridge to just make sure it's going to hold shapes once you start cutting the shapes this one you can tell it's going to be like a good one fridge so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some clean pack and the whole thing comes in I'm excited for this one because of the consistency. It smells amazing. I haven't tried it. My mom likes to try like raw, just unbaked things. She would just be, you know, eating out of this dough right now. But uh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna wait. I'm just packing this, covering this thing, cover it quite well. If you use plastic bags, like Ziploc bags, it's totally up to you. I usually let them chill in the fridge for about overnight. 
So I'm just going to put this on the first just shell bit, then we're going to come back to just uh, cut a few shapes and then bake them. Then I'm just going to start cutting my shapes. I'm going to be using my rolling pin with my spacer bands. I do have a tutorial on my channel of this, this thing right here. If you want to check it out, it's going to be linked below. Once I have that, I'm just going to start cutting. It should come right up. Alright, my cookies are now ready. I baked them for about 8 to 12 minutes. It depends because and this ones were ready at minute uh, 8 and this ones were ready at minute 10. So just keep an eye on them. One thing I want to mention is that these ones are a bit trickier to know when they are ready because they are chocolate so it's harder to see when the edges are you know starting to look uh, golden brown. Just keep an eye on them. And now I'm just going to be taking one cookie to taste it and to kind of let you know. Sort of like a mini review of this recipe. So I'm just going to take this one and these are really good. And this is what the inside looks like. They're honestly delicious. This actually tastes like brownies, like mini brownies. I actually read in the blogs that somebody mentioned that they taste like Oreos. Uh, I was expecting that Oreo taste, but for me this tastes like um, brownies. They are so good. They are still moist on the inside. It's funny. I just wanted to let you know the taste. And if you're wondering why I have other like shapes, it's because these are for some other projects. So if you stay tuned to my channel, you're going to find out what these are for. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It helps my channel a lot. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And I will talk to you later. Give it a try. Bye guys.